Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Kim, for <laughs> such a wonderful moment. Again, we are coming to you uh, from the altar of Hosanna Gospel Center. We welcome you so much. We welcome all our church members, our friends, from wherever you are listening from. May the Lord God bless you and uh, keep you safe even as we continue to uh, witness the glory of God over our lives. I am so grateful even for the people that are celebrating their birthday this month. We thank God because God has given them yet another opportunity to reevaluate the good things the Lord has done in your life. And I'm really very grateful. Thank you so much for uh, the men and the women who have made uh, this possible this uh, morning for us to be coming to you live. We thank God so much. Uh, our engineer, our senior engineer is here, uh, our brother Panio. We thank God so much for that, and we appreciate you very much uh, for being here today. We appreciate what the Lord has done, and uh, we thank God also. My niece Moby is in the house. We thank God so much for her. She has come all the way from Lancaster uh, to help out, and we are really very grateful for what the Lord has done. I know we have um, uh, witnessed so many things, uh, and especially this past week, uh, dealing with the epidemic, uh, dealing with now the, uh, the protest, the peaceful protests that have been going on. And uh, we've been, um, it's been a tough week, but we thank God so much. I don't know whether you know, you've been like me, I didn't know how to react the first time that I saw uh, that video of uh, that man uh, being murdered on the streets of uh, Minneapolis. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know how to react. But uh, I went uh, and uh, asked God for peace. I went and asked God to show me what to do. And so God has been working in my spirit. God has been working uh, in my heart and in my mind. And this morning, uh, we are here to tell you the word of God that brings hope into our lives. I came with a message of hope, even through all this, to let you know that our God has a better future for all of us, that our God is able to make great things work. So today, I'm really very grateful, and I can say, as I bring forth the message of hope and healing, I know that God is still at work. So thank you so much for all of them that have been praying and uh, also supporting this ministry financially. We are very, very, very grateful because you have enabled us to keep our doors open here at Hosanna Gospel Center. You have enabled us to uh, continue our ministering by your prayers, by your financial support. And we really, really thank God so much that God has given us grace. So we are happy and we are grateful that God has been with us and God has taken good care of our lives. So uh, yesterday, we had a great time uh, here uh, in Worcester community. Uh, we went for a drive through uh, graduation uh, to our sister, uh, Dr. Nora's house. And uh, we drove over there and uh, we had that graduation, you know, uh, drive through and uh, we honked and uh, we had a great time. Dr. Nora, we congratulate you very much and we thank God so much uh, that God has given you this opportunity together with your family. We appreciate what the Lord is doing. And others that are graduating, you already saw our sister Esther, she was here. We celebrate you, Esther, may the Lord God bless you and also uh, keep you even as you get ready to finish up with your studies this week. So we also had uh, other, other brethren uh, actually going to the uh, Worcester Center uh, at the Worcester City where there were peaceful demonstrations that were going on. Uh, they were happening the same time we were having that um, graduation uh, at noon yesterday. And I thank God so much for the brethren who also joined uh, the Worcester uh, uh, community in protesting the, the racial injustices that have been going on right here in Worcester and around this whole country. And 
we are believing God and we are trusting God that God is ahead of us and he is paving away and great things are going to come as a result to what's going on. So keep praying and whatever you can do, make sure you do it. Whatever you can do, make sure you do it. If the Lord calls you to pray, uh, just keep praying. If the Lord tells you to go and uh, do peaceful demonstration, go do it. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, go ahead and do it. But don't forget this one thing. Do not forget if you are qualified uh, to vote in this country, uh, in your city, in your state, make sure you register to vote. And come November, make sure you make your voice heard by actually putting in power people that will be able to implement your desired policies that we need to see in this country. So we are, thank we are thankful to God. And again, as I say, we are fully supporting the peaceful demonstrations that are going on, uh, you know, uh, right here in Worcester and around the globe. We are believing God that there is no man that is superior than any other. I mean, uh, we are demanding uh, and uh, believing and trusting God and God is bringing it to pass that there is no scripture and uh, there is no nothing, no evidence from the word of God that any man is superior from another man. So that's why uh, there, are all, there are all these peaceful demonstrations all across, declaring that the white man is not superior to a black man, and no one has the authority to dominate another man. No one, no one, no one has authority to dominate or control another man. So we all know very well that God created one man. This we know. From the scriptures, we know very, very well that God created one man, Adam, and put all the human beings in this man. God created Adam, one man, and he put all of us in this man. And today, the United Nations, you know, estimate that our current population today in the whole world is around 7.8 billion human beings. That's, that's a lot of people. But God made sure that he put all these people in one man, Adam, so that no man will ever think that they are superior or even inferior to other human beings. That's why God put all these men in the lives of one man, Adam. Adam, the first man. God put all of us in him. And that's why nobody today, no man, has the authority to dominate other men or even control them. God put all of us in this man so that no one will ever think that they are superior or inferior to another human being. And this is what I want to talk about uh, this day because I know by the power of God, God has given us the ability to control. And this is clear, that God equalized all men in creation. God equalized all men in creation. This is what happened. In the book of Genesis 2-7, and we're going to read that so that we can all see that God equalized all men during creation. And it says here, then the Lord God formed, uh, then the Lord God formed, that is, created the body of a man from the dust. And I want to pause here to remind each one of us today that we are all created by God. We are all created by God. We are all created from the dust of the ground. And this is important. And God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. An individual. Complete in body and in spirit. God breathed 
in this man the breath of life and the man became a living being an individual complete in body and in spirit so this is clear that the lord god almighty created us created adam from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and that's why we are alive today and we are here declaring that God made men from the dust of the earth. And all men are from the dust of the ground. Doesn't matter your color. Doesn't, doesn't matter whether you are orange, you are black, you are white, you are yellow, you are red. I mean, it doesn't matter. We are all created the same way. We are all created by the Almighty God. And we have one source. And this is why today we know very well that the same blood that flows from a black man, from a white man, from a yellow man, it's the same blood. We know very well we have one Father, our God in heaven. And we have one earthly Father, and his name is Adam. We have one mother who is called Eve. If you believe in the Bible, if you believe in creation, you know very well, you know very well that God created man. And that's why I said it doesn't matter whether you are black, doesn't matter whether you are white, doesn't matter you are color, God equalized all men in creation. And so, this issue of that one race is superior to the other is just an ideology of man that has come forth through his crooked thoughts. This is what has happened. That the idea that one race is superior than another, this is an ideology created by men through their wicked crooked ways. And that is why today we understand the word of God. That God equalized us when he created us. And we have to stand by faith. We have to do all it takes to ensure that what God intended happens. That is why I started by saying that here at Hosanna, God called us to bring the message of hope and healing. And that is why we are supporting the peaceful demonstrations that are going around in our city and around the country and even around the globe. So that the word of God can be manifested that God has created man equal. God has created man equal. And so as we speak, as we continue to talk about this, I am very sure that we are not only, you know, peacefully demonstrating, we are praying about it, and we are also taking other necessary actions required to bring forth change. And I'll be talking about those in a few moments, but I want to keep saying that God equalized all men in creation. God actually equalized all of us at creation. You know, on Saturday, uh, actually on Thursday, I'm sorry, on Thursday, we were talking with our, uh, uh, with Dr. Zori. I'm sure most of you know Dr. Zori, and I know she has tuned in this afternoon. Uh, she is from uh, South Africa. She was there. She, uh, she joins us in the fellowship. She's a member of the fellowship. And uh, we were talking with her on uh, Thursday fellowship, and she was telling us when actually she saw the video of uh, George, you know, being murdered on the streets of Minneapolis, it reminded her of what had gone on for many years in South Africa. The segregation in South Africa that was so bitter. It had plagued South Africa for a very long time. For a very long time. And she felt, you know, that, that, you know, that, um, that, that feeling that wasn't very present. But, you know, she also reminded us that today, South Africa 
does not have appetite. God came through for them and God has given them that freedom that is no longer there. So when she saw that, you know, a policeman, you know, uh, murdering that man, you know, it, she was really moved like many of us. But there is one thing that we know, that our God is a God of seasons and he changes seasons. And a season today is changing. A season today is changing. I always am reminded of uh, my dad and most of you who are listening mostly know my dad. And uh, he went to be with the Lord like two years ago. And uh, he was brought up in Kenya uh, during the time of the colonial masters. And uh, he used to give me stories of, you know, how the colonial masters from Britain uh, the, the white colonial masters from Britain used to mistreat uh, the Africans, you know, uh, murdering them, doing all sorts of evil uh, uh, against them. But they never ceased to have the faith. This was something that he told me very clearly, that one thing that they never did, they never ceased to have the faith and the hope that one day, they will be free from the colonial masters from England. They, uh, they knew very well that a time will come, although they are being mistreated, although they were being harassed, although others were being murdered, they never stopped the fight because they knew one day the colonial masters will be defeated and Kenya will be free. So all the Africans that were fighting for the freedom in Kenya they had faith. They had hope. They had faith. They had hope that one day, one day, God will literally change the events and the seasons. And we know very well in 1963, the colonial masters were defeated and Kenya became free from the colonial masters and there was freedom in Kenya. And so today, all I'm saying is, Keep your hope alive, even during this time. Keep your hope alive during this crisis. Very important that God help us to keep our hope alive during these times. Because these are not easy times. These are not, you know, times that... Uh, many people can laugh and do the many things that we would love to do. But one thing we know, one thing we know is that the spirit of the living God is moving. And we can see it all over the world. And that is why our faith will stay up. This is why our faith will not go down. I've always said, people that do not have a hope for tomorrow, they lack the strength for today to do the things that they need to do. And I don't know about you, but when I started, you know, pondering what was going on, uh, I didn't know, I felt, you know, like I'm powerless. I didn't know what to believe. I didn't know what to tell my, my kids, my boys who are teenagers. I didn't know how to explain this to them. But there is one thing that was coming into my spirit. That it's a new season that is coming. That there is a new wave that is moving across this country and across this world. And it is a wave of revival. It's a wave that we will see God at work. It is a wave that we will see the word of God manifested in all areas. Because we all know very well. Not all policemen are bad. By the way, let me tell you, not all policemen are bad. Not all policemen that are white are bad. I've been personally been helped a lot by, you know, the policemen right here in Worcester. Right here in Worcester. I've been helped. I've called for help. They have come. They have given me, you know, the help that I needed, you know, with a lot of courtesy. So, not all of them are bad. This is something that we all need to understand. 
There is a balance here. Because I wouldn't want to assume that every policeman I see on the street is looking for me. I don't want to walk in the streets of Worcester or across the country and feel like I'm hunted. I know that's not the case. And I'm not going to allow the spirit of fear to dominate my life. We started this year by saying God has not given us the spirit of fear. But he has given us the spirit of power, love, and sound mind. And so even during these times, when we are dealing with the health crisis, and now we are dealing with the racial injustices in, injustice in this country, we know very well that God does not want us to walk in fear. God wants us to walk by faith. And we know very well what faith is. And I'm going to uh, tell you, faith is believing that our future will be better than our today. This is what faith is all about. Faith is believing that your future will be better than your today. And this is what we are experiencing today. Actually, this is what I told my sons. <clears throat> this is what I told my sons. That you see all these demonstrations all across the country, from Worcester to New York to Los Angeles, all over the country and all over the world. This is a wave. It has not just come. It is a wave that actually will sweep us into the faith because we believe that faith is believing that your future will be better than you are today. And so I told my sons, this means that actually your future is brighter than the way it was now. Simply because a new season is dawning. A new season is coming. And I can tell you, I don't know whether you have faith like me, but I can tell you, I do believe strongly that the changes we are about to see in this country will be greater than any other change of racial injustice that has ever been experienced in this country. This will be the greatest. This will be the greatest move of God in this country and even around the globe. So do not belittle the demonstrations. Do not belittle the prayers. Do not belittle those men and women who have a vote and they are ready to exercise their vote come election in November. We know very well that God has a reason for everything. God has a purpose. And I have had many people, you know, of course, they have complained. They have said they don't know what to behave. They are so discouraged. But there is one thing that I can tell you from the book of Romans 8.18. 8, I can tell you, you are listening to me from your house. Maybe you are listening from Kenya, from Australia. I know there are people that have tuned in from different countries, from different cities. And I can tell you this. For I consider from the standpoint of faith, we are believers. We believe in God. We don't walk in fear. We walk by faith. And Paul was saying, for I consider from the standpoint of faith that the sufferings of the present life are not worth to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us. This is important, brethren. Consider as the demonstrations go on, as the prayers as the epidemic come to an end by faith, consider from the standpoint of faith. If you want to teach your children, if you have children like me in this country, in the United States, 
Now, there is something you can actually teach them from the word of God. You can tell them to consider from the standpoint of faith. Make sure you tell them to consider from the standpoint of faith. Many people are considering from the standpoint of fear. What's going to happen now in this country? What's going to befall us in this country? What about our children? What about our jobs? What about this? What about this? My brother, my sister, Paul said, for I consider from the standpoint of faith. And I urge you all, whatever is going on, do not consider from any other standpoint. Whatever is going on is not political. I told someone, you know, you know the, 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 what's going on, it's not political. There is nothing political in breathing. There is no, nothing political in breathing. You need to breathe to be alive. So we cannot bring politics in something that is very important as this. Consider not from your standpoint of politics, but from the standpoint of the faith in God. That the sufferings of the present life are not worth to be compared with the glory that is about to be revealed to us and in us. Consider from the standpoint of faith. Consider from the standpoint of faith. Do not consider from the standpoint of fear. From the standpoint of politics. From the standpoint of whatever. But consider from the standpoint of faith. Because we know very well that the sufferings of today are nothing compared with the glory that is about to be revealed in our lives, in your lives. So, even though you, are, you have been wondering about how your children will grow in this country, I can tell you comfortably from the standpoint of faith, that actually life is becoming better in this country than it was yesterday. Life in America is better than it was last year. I know right now we are experiencing crisis, but it's a transition. God is taking us to a better place. Because the death of George Floyd is not in vain. The death of all black men in this country in the hands of the police is not in vain. God says that the glory that is about to be revealed is greater than anything we have ever experienced. And I believe it and I take it seriously and that is why I have taken into prayer, I have taken into advising people on how to remain in faith and in hope because our God does not change. The church that's about to come in this country and around the globe has never been seen before. So we thank God so much for this. On Thursday, by the way, uh, uh, in our fellowship, we had a beautiful fellowship. For them that um, are able to join our fellowship, as you saw it before, uh, it's always on Zoom. And uh, I know they have, uh, they already gave that uh, the, the directions on how to enter Zoom before uh, and maybe they will after because I would love you to join us uh, in our fellowship on Thursday. We start at 6 uh, p.m. Uh, in Worcester, uh, Worcester time. Uh, that's uh, the New York time for them that are outside the country and out of the state. We start at 6 uh, p.m. Uh, through 8 p.m. We always have very powerful uh, fellowship. It's fellowship. I mean fellowship on Zoom, where people share the word of God. People share what God is doing. They are, they are, they are journey of faith. Their walk of faith. Their walk of grace. Their challenges. They, 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 they talk about what God has done in their lives. And I, I, I was saying, so you can, you can actually join us on Zoom uh, at 6 p.m. every Thursday uh, for, uh, for this fellowship. And uh, again, uh, this happens 6 p.m. Worcester time or the New York times, uh, the New York time, uh, and it's 6 p.m. So join in. And I was about to say on Thursday fellowship, 
we had one of our, our teenagers who actually said something that actually um, struck uh, in my spirit. And she was saying she is looking for a time in this country when the policeman will not look at her as, uh, you know, as a weapon, but as a person. And I felt that was very uh, strong coming from a teenager. Coming from a youth, you know, in our fellowship. This was, you know, the big fellowship. We had uh, everybody come to that fellowship. They share their experiences, their walk, uh, you know, of faith and their challenges, their fears, their worries. We pray together. And so this teenager was telling us, you know, that she's looking for a time when the policeman will not look at her like a weapon, but like a person, like an individual created in the image of God. And I feel this was so moving because if, uh, when a, if a police stops you and uh, if he's seeing you like a weapon, that's very dangerous. That's extremely dangerous. And so we were really moved and I said, this is good. And we have been having these conversations with, um, with our teenagers and uh, with our Sunday school. Uh, my wife, Tabs, have been working very hard uh, with our sister, Waja. Uh, working with the children and uh, like on Tuesdays and I also encourage you, uh, parents on Tuesday, you know, uh, there is that meeting for the youth uh, the teenagers that happens uh, and uh, I'm sure you also saw that on the Zoom, uh, my wife is um, a professional counselor, uh, she's a licensed counselor uh, and um, specifically working with children, you know, she actually uh, licensed in counseling children. So this is a very important time that she has with this, uh, with these kids, with these teenagers, and they talk about these things, they ponder about these things. Because at times, uh, as parents, I understand we, we, at times we don't know what to tell them. You know, uh, sometimes they don't want to talk to us because they think we we don't know how to respond. So in this forum, and uh, 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 it was powerful, especially last week on Tuesday. I would love you to send your teenagers to this forum on Zoom. It is so powerful. It is so great. And again, as I say, you know, Tabs, my wife, you know, uh, she's, uh, she coordinates all that. And uh, it has been so good. And so this teenager, you know, she challenged us on that Thursday. And we said, surely, this is why we need to pray that change will come and come quicker even than many people expect. So we have faith in God. We know what God is doing and we are not ignorant of what our God is doing. And so we, again, as I said, we are not walking in fear. We are walking by faith because we know and we believe that our future will be better than today. This is what is making us to do all these things. You might wonder, why did, uh, are some people going to do the peaceful demonstrations? Why are others actually registering to vote right now? Why are others actually moving into prayer and fasting? Like our brother, Pastor Kamau. He was here on Sunday and he delivered a very powerful message. And he said for him, all he is doing now is prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. So we have faith that things are getting better. That's why people are taking the necessary actions to make sure that God moves and moves fast in our country. So keep the faith and do all that the Lord expects you to do because our hope is in God. Our hope is in God. Our hope is in God. So take serious what God tells you to do. Take it very seriously. And I can stop here to insist a lot on them that qualify. Wherever you are listening from, if you qualify to vote and you have not registered to vote, this would be an opportune time for you to register to vote. Most of the uh, states in this country, you can register to vote online. So you can just go online if you qualify uh, to vote and actually, you know, fill in the application. And come November, make sure that you make your voice heard. You put the people that will change the policies that you desire in power. So that we don't have to keep saying, but we are actually doing the action. And if you are not able to vote, 
at least you can encourage someone that can register to vote, to first register to vote, and encourage them when the time comes to vote, to go and vote. And I also encourage you, don't only vote on the national elections. The, the, the police departments, most of them that we, we are actually now talking about mostly, the, actually the leadership of those uh, departments actually happen locally. We put people you know, in office to be the chief of police. We choose people to be the, 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 the DA, you know, you know, to be the, the attorney general of the state. I mean, we choose all these people. So we cannot complain if we do not go and vote in the local elections. Going to vote for the, for the senior judge. Going to vote for who will be the attorney general. Going to vote for who will be the sheriff in the Worcester County. We need to go and vote for them. Don't only wait for the national election whereby now we are voting the president. No! The Worcester police is directed by the, our Worcester mayor and uh, the chief of police. And if we are to change something here locally in Worcester, we need to go and vote on these local elections. So, please, brethren, uh, this is important. I know I did not come to do politics today, but I also need to, to, to tell you, we need to see real change. And the only way we will see real change is actually making sure we put the people in positions, in power, who are able to uh, change and to implement the changes that we need. So, wherever you are listening from, doesn't matter where you are. Even though you are listening in Kenya, make sure you vote over there in Kenya. You put somebody who you believe has your best interest in office. That will be very important because that is what it means to have faith with action. That's what it means to make things happen. And this is not time to make a lot of noise. It's time to make Things happen by faith. So that's why I said there are people who are very serious in registering to vote. And others are very busy in helping others and encouraging others to go and vote. This is vital. This is very, very important. My brother, my sister, I can tell you, with everything that's going on today, personally, I've been telling God, how do I interpret all this? Lord, how do I, what does this mean for my, you know, for my future, for my career, for my, I mean, all these things. But God has been so kind to me. God has been so good to me and my family. God has taken good care of our lives. And uh, these words, and I'll, I'll be praying today for them that really need the peace of God in their lives. I know there are people who are stressed, not only now by the corona crisis, but now the corona crisis have been added now this racial injustice issue now. So they don't even know how to behave. It's like an insult to an injury. But I can tell you very well, God has been talking to me about peace. And uh, that's why I said I will be praying for you this afternoon. That God will give you the peace that cannot be understood even by human beings. With the health crisis going on, with some people suffering so much financially, with others now dealing so much in their spirit with this racial injustice. They don't know how to behave. They don't know how to talk, to talk with others about what's going on in their lives. I mean, this is key. But the Lord God Almighty has purposed to give you peace in the midst of all this. In the book of Isaiah 26. And I'm going to be praying for you that the Lord will give you peace. That the Lord will give you peace. Because it's very clear. 
The Lord says here that he will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. Where is your mind during this crisis? If your mind is stayed on the news, you will be depressed. If your mind is focused on the White House, you will be depressed. But the Lord says, he will keep in perfect peace those that their minds are stayed on him. My brother, my sister, make sure that your mind is stayed on God. On what the Lord has done and what the Lord will do. He will keep in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. When your mind is focused on God, when all you do is to meditate on what God is about to do, when your mind is focused on the future, you can sing the song we were talking about the other Sunday. That because he lives, I can face tomorrow. We can join Bugela and Gloria to sing the song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds my future. And my life is worth living just because he lives. When your mind is focused on God, it means it's not focused on other things. This is the season to focus your mind on God. This is the time to allow your mind to stay on God. Do not allow your mind to be taken captive by what's going on on the streets of this country. Do not allow your mind to be taken captive by what's going on in the world today. Allow your mind to be stayed on the Lord. So that he can continue to whisper to you his word. That when the enemy comes against you like a flood, the Holy Spirit will lift a standard against him and you will win. Let the Holy Spirit of God continue to speak to you and let you know that your future is brighter. Than your past. Let the Lord continue to speak to you. That he is your refuge. He is your fortress. A very present help. In time of trouble. Let the Lord continue to speak to you. That no weapon of war forged against you. Will prevail. Let the Lord continue to minister to you. If he be on your side. None can be against you. Let your word, let your mind be focused on God. For he will keep in perfect peace them that their mind has stayed on him. Because they trust in him. If you allow the Lord to be the one dominating your mind and your heart, it means you have put your faith and your trust in him, you qualify for peace. You qualify for peace. And this time, I want to talk to you and let you know 
The Lord desires that you may have peace in the midst of everything that is going on. You might not have the answers. You might not know what to do. You might not even understand the future of your business. You might not even understand the future of your job. You might not understand the future of your relationship. You might not understand what's going to be happening tomorrow. But there is one guarantee that you have. That your future is better than you are today. And the sufferings of today are nothing compared to what that's about to happen in your life. And I want to pray with you this afternoon. That the spirit of God, that the power of God will rest upon you. You will enjoy the peace. You will release your children to God. Don't worry. How are they going to grow up in this country? How is it going to be? How is it going to be in this country? I can assure you without a shadow of a doubt that tomorrow will be better than today. By faith in Jesus name we know and we have seen him doing things in a big way. There is seasons and time for everything. There was season for slavery and there is season for freedom. And the season of freedom came and now is the time of equality. And we are believing God who created man, all men equal, that he will make it happen as we do our part. But I want to be able to pray with you that the peace of God will rest upon you this afternoon. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We worship you and we glorify your name. There are men and women and children listening to me, my God, in their houses. They have been wondering this whole week. Some families have not even had time to talk about what's going on. They've been afraid to confront the issues that have been going on in this country. Dear Lord, today, I pray that your peace will rest upon them greatly. Your presence will rest upon them greatly. Our dear Heavenly Father, let the calm of God come to their mind, come to their spirit. Let them enjoy the peace that you have given unto them. Our God and our Father, those parents that don't have answers, my God, they don't know what to tell their children. My God, I pray for peace. That you may even put words in your mouth as you have promised in your word. My God and my Father, we pray for your peace upon this nation. My God, my Father, we want to pray for our President Donald Trump and all his advisors. Our God, we want to pray for all the governors and their advisors, oh God, across this country. My Jehovah, my God, this is a moment of truth and leadership. I pray, God Almighty, you will speak to them and they will hear your voice. Give them the guidance that they need as they read this country. We, within the health crisis and even now with, the, with this racial injustices going on, my God, we pray that you may give them peace and guidance. Our dear Heavenly Father today, we also want to pray for all the church members, my God, and the men and the women in our community and all over the country and the globe that are suffering, my Father. They've been attacked by the coronavirus and even the effects of the coronavirus. Our God and our Father, we declare in the name of Jesus that the healing grace of God, 
the healing power of the word of God will rest upon them greatly. We declare that the coronavirus has no power over their bodies. They are healed in Jesus' name. Our God, by faith, we lay our hands on them and we declare freedom from sickness. Freedom from disease. Freedom from attack. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our God and our Father, all of them that have tuned on from different states and countries, my Father, even our family, our friends, my God, and even our members here at church and our friends, they have needs. Our God, you know each and every need in their lives. My God, others, are going through things with their children, in their families, in their relationships, others in their school. My father, different challenges. You know where they hurt the most. And today, God Almighty, we pray for every need represented by our listeners. And even them that will tune after this broadcast, them that will listen to this video, my Father, we pray as they reason, your spirit will invade their lives and change their lives and meet them according to your riches in glory. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We worship you because we, when we call on you, you answer our prayers. When we call on you, our God and our Father, you give us freedom. Today, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for every need. Our dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for what you have done. All of them that are listening and have tuned in, my God, my Father, bless them. Give them favor. They have continued to pray for this ministry. They believe in the voice of this ministry to bring hope and healing to our hurting generation. Our God and our Father, our mission has never been clearer. That you have called us to bring hope and healing to a hurting generation. Our God and our Father, we will continue to speak your word. Because your word is truth and your word is life. Lord, we give you glory and we give you honor. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and believe. And everybody says amen. Everybody says amen. If you are in here, give the Lord a good hand clap. May the Lord God bless you once again. We appreciate you tuning in. May the Lord God bless you. Keep the faith and know that the best days are not behind us. Our best days are ahead of us. Great and mighty things are happening. Have a great week. May the Lord God bless you. And once again, thank you for tuning in. May you be blessed and may your family flourish in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you.